Gentleman yields. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Colorado, Representative DeGette, for five minutes of questioning. Thank you so much. Administrator Reagan, I, I myself want to thank you and your entire agency for the work you do to protect the health and welfare of all Americans, and in particular, my constituents. And I want to apologize for the um, unnecessary abuse that you are suffering in this hearing from some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, asking you questions that have multiple parts that you can't possibly answer in order just to get a sound bite at. So I apologize for that. And I also think it's kind of ironic that, that my colleagues are 100% opposed to what the EPA does, unless, of course, it's cleaning up environmental contamination in their districts. And then they want to know why you didn't do it yesterday even though they keep trying to cut your budget. So you don't have to respond to that. I just want to let you know it does not go unnoticed. Um, so so the, uh, Mr. Palmer was, asked, was referring a little bit to methane, and I want to talk to you just a, for a few minutes about methane, because it's something I've worked a lot on. Methane is responsible for about one-third of the current warming our planet is experiencing. Is that right? It is. And um, it's true that oil and natural gas operations are our nation's largest industrial source of methane. Is that right? It is, yes. Now, um, in 2021, June of 2021, President Biden signed into law a Congressional Review Act invo invalidating the Trump administration's 2020 methane rescission rule, which tried to block EPA's authority to regulate methane from existing sources. Um, now, um, I, I led the effort to um, invalidate this rule on the House side. And what it did was it reinstated two Obama-era methane emissions rules that set stricter limits on the amount of methane the oil and gas industry can release from drilling sites. Now, so, M Administrator Reagan, the administration's final methane rule addresses emissions from both new and existing oil and gas operations. Is that right? Yes, it is. And, um, and this enforcement the EPA takes, it's within the purview of the authorities that is given to it by Congress. Is that right? Yes. Now, why is it important to address existing sources of methane in the oil and gas industry? Well, these existing sources, as you've correctly pointed out, are some of the most potent contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, which are exacerbating not only uh, climate uh, uh, disadvantages, but also uh, disparate impacts to health as well. And so we're focused on these existing sources and these new sources because we're reducing not only methane, we're also capturing the volatile organic chemicals and other toxic pollutants that are disproportionately impacting neighborhoods around them. That's right. And speaking about some of those neighborhoods, um, it's, it's not just methane. Um, in many districts, including mine, there, um, the, there are... Um, Community, uh, there are really vulnerable communities. Um, typically, they're low-income, disadvantaged minority communities. They f face multiple sources of pollution that compound upon one another, which has a negative effect on a community's health. And um, I think you know about one of those communities, um, Global Illyria Swansea, which is in North Denver. And um, I, I invited you to come there. I think you went there, but I was voting. So I'm inviting you to come back with me to see some of the impacts there. I'm wondering what actions EPA plans to take to alleviate the environmental and health risks of cumulative impacts for environmental justice communities. Well, we're laser focused on these cumulative impacts coming from multiple sources. Um, thankfully, we've uh, started cross programmatic efforts to take into account cumulative impacts. Uh, but, but Congress, through the Inflation Reduction Act and Bill, have given us the resources to empower communities to also help us help them with solutions that they've had for decades. So we have carrots as well as sticks in order to in, encourage the best behavior possible to reduce these pollutants. And how does the fiscal year 2025 budget, in tandem with these investments that you just referred to, allow the EPA to work towards achieving those goals? Well, it helps us to really focus on the areas that were not funded by Bill and Ira. We have some very core programs, uh, whether it's looking at our emergency response. Uh, we have uh, situations, unfortunately, like East Palestine or like the bridge in Baltimore or the wildfires in Maui. Uh, we want to keep pace with TSCA to be sure that we don't have 
some of these chemicals that are not the best out on the market and give us the ability to review and put new chemicals out there. Uh, we want to be sure that some of these uh, congressionally mandated projects that are happening in districts all across the country have the technical uh, resources and availability to carry out uh, that spending. And so we really need some core functions that benefit from uh, the appropriated budget that were not accounted for, nor should they have been in the Inflation Reduction Act and Bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. I yield back. 